we're here on a special uh, uh, themed issue of, um, I shouldn't say issue, but a themed uh, episode of, of The Exchange. Um, this is actually uh, lucky episode number 13. We have Eric uh, Anderson here from uh, from SIMSA and uh, Igor Makarenko uh, here from Solex Thermal Science. You know what, I'm going to throw it over to you, Eric, first uh, to tell us a little bit about uh, uh, who is SIMSA, uh, who you represent and, and what you guys do. So SIMSA is an acronym for the Saskatchewan Industrial and Mining Suppliers Association. So we're a group, um, uh, an association that represents the supply chain for heavy industrial mining and energy resources in, in Saskatchewan. Uh, right now we have 243 members. Uh, we've grown through COVID by about 15%. We focus on procurement. We focus on bringing buyers and sellers face to face. Uh, we're not so much a government lobby group. We do sell, but we're, that's not our focus. Our focus is on buying and selling and creating business for our members. And Igor, this has been a long time coming for you and I as we've tried to manage schedules and uh, and everything. Uh, but uh, welcome finally uh, to uh, uh, your first episode of the Exchange. Uh, yeah, happy to be here and uh, happy to uh, you know uh, get to know you, Eric, and uh, chat about uh, Potash. I'm director of uh, fertilizer division of Solix and uh, looking after the global business of fertilizer in general uh, for Solix uh, Thermal Inc. And I've uh, been uh, happily doing that and enjoying doing it for the last 11 years. Uh, uh, I guess my relationship with Solix w goes way back into actually the alma mater was Eric from from Saskatchewan. So that's where that's where I got to know Solix when I was doing some other things in life uh, before. We've talked uh, about potash uh, and the Saskatchewan potash industry. Really, it's the world's worst kept secret. So, uh, uh, give us um, give us a little bit of perspective on uh, Saskatchewan's role within the global potash community. Well, we're probably, if we're not the leader today, we will be shortly the world's leading producer of potash. Kind um, of kind of comes up and down depending on how the mines are running here, and then over in uh, Belarus and in Russia, the other two major centers. There's some other places in the world, but it's basically Saskatchewan, Belarus, Russia, um, they're the three hubs. Um, you know, we've got a key role and with the announcement of the Janssen Potash project uh, by BHP finally being sanctioned, you know, that only further um, um, affirms our position now as a world leader in it. If you go back into the BHP PowerPoint presentations for 2010, 11, 12, 13, You'll see that Jans was intended to be the first of several mines. You know, that's several billion dollars worth of expenditures. And people are wondering, well, why would BHP do that? And uh, I think the simple thing is, well, there's about a million more people in this world every week. Um, people don't realize the population growth when you take on a global scale. And, you know, there's, you know, that many more people every week. And you realize, but wait a minute, we're not growing any dirt. There's no more farmland. In fact, those people are absorbing farmland. So we're having to feed more and more people with less and less farmland. Well, the simple solution, which is, is fertilizer, um, is to grow more food. I mean, it's a simple problem. And you can, and we can try to talk about a lot of things, but when it comes down to important things in the world, food, um, you know, people kind of embrace that as, as a key item in life. Next to oxygen, I guess, is food. So the solution for the potash is one of three key ingredients in fertilizer. It's potassium, nitrogen, and phosphate, and, 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 and potash is the potassium. You know, so, I mean, I think BHP saw this and went, well, you know, if, as, as they try to de decarbonize their company, what, what's a commodity, that a bulk commodity they can get involved in that they're good, that they would potentially be good at, and potash made sense. It will be a substantial effect because it's, I mean, Saskatchewan is already the largest producer of potash in the world. Uh, there is a mine in Saskatchewan, the largest in the world right now, and it is becoming another largest mine in the world in the same province, not too far away, relatively speaking, from each other. So that gravitation center is going to be really heavily here. So the question what's going to happen with, with other producers, but to the Eric's point earlier on, there is a week, uh, every week there is a million souls that, that, that appear on the, on the face of earth, and that rate is not slowing down. So in a way, I would I would uh, I would refrain from you know pushing the panic button, saying, "Oh my God, we're gonna we're not gonna see any business on the other side of the world." As equipment supplier, it's gonna be all here. Again, this, I don't think this is gonna be exactly like that. It will be still it, it will be the ways of balancing all out. So I'm suspecting that initially it would be a little bit murky, just like you know nobody knows exactly 
how this is gonna pan out. But those those mines in Russia and Belarus, they're not gonna be they're not gonna be shutting down because of the news, right? I mean, I I, I, I can probably confidently say that. I want to switch uh, the topic a little bit, uh, and this is a, a meaty topic, and that is really uh, the drive to um, uh, you know improved carbon accountability uh, all the way up uh, the supply chain. Uh, and uh, Eric, uh, there's some really exciting stuff going on from the Simsa perspective. Yeah, well, what I think it all kind of it it kind of came together quickly when BlackRock said that carbon is real. To, their, to the letter to the CEOs. When they told the CEOs that we're gonna be looking at your carbon number, and if you want our trillions, you need to have a carbon number, carbon story figured out. Sure. Well, that really impressed the CEOs of all the resource sector companies fairly quickly, who then, they started looking at their carbon number, and then, so they look at what they're doing, but then they turn around and look at the supply chain, which is us. So there's a parade coming. And so this with this parade, we have a choice. We can be in front of it, in it, behind it, or under it. Uh, we thought, let's get in front of it. So as an association, we created a carbon calculator for the, for the industrial and the mining supply chain. You plug in a couple of very simple numbers, actually, and then it generates your carbon numbers, uh, scopes one and two at the end. And it tells, and you can do it for several locations in, all across Canada. Um, we had KPMG build it for us. We had the help from BHP, uh, TC Energy, uh, Nutrient and Chemical. Those four companies help us develop it so that it was actually giving them the answers that they would potentially need. None of them are currently looking for that number from the supply chain, but they're going to be looking for that number. It's free for anybody in the world on our website right now. If you go to simsa.ca, it says calculator at the top or one of the banners across the top is calculator, you click on it. Do you have perspective on uh, how many of your members uh, knew their carbon number uh, before this started? I would say probably zero. <laughs> um, I mean, it could, but there might have been a few, so I shouldn't do that flippant, but it yeah. wouldn't have been rampant, let's put it that way. Once it becomes mandated by the mining companies or, or oil producers that the first level will be, probably the first iteration will be, do you have a carbon number, yes or no? What is it? Share it. It won't be rated, they're just going to be pass fail. do you have one? Yeah. The next thing will be, we, you have a carbon number, okay, now we're going to start rating you against others, but they can't really start doing that, I think until they get a better idea of where's everybody at. I Igor, I see your head enthusiastically going up and down in a vertical motion. This is not your first time uh, uh, being uh, uh, exposed or subjected to conversations around uh, you know, carbon accountability and this idea of uh, ESG being important and, and who's being picked to supply the equipment. But give me your perspective on that. We, we start seeing that in a request for providing the carbon number from some of our clients. And uh, I'm really uh, glad and um, believe me, after this conversation, I will jump on the uh, Simsa website <laughs> to take a look at your calculator before you um, before you made it paid. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, and, and compare it to data that we already, uh, we had to come up with a number and we, we were simply asked the question, you know, in our world, we it's, it's a bit of a two part uh, or maybe three part sauce is that we are a, a manufacturing company. So we, we, we fabricate equipment with our partners and uh, the, the, these partners are becoming, they also supposed to have a, a carbon number, just similar to what the big producers asking to their uh, sub vendors provided with a carbon number because they want to cumulatively present that number to whoever that number needs to be presented. So we also have that uh, a staged approach. So we had the company we have a solar we have solar office in Calgary. Uh, perhaps there is some carbon number in there, but it's very minuscule. But the bigger number becomes leveled down to where we fabricate our equipment at our facility. And I, and I guess a bigger number would be is to where our equipment, which we have probably put our label on, goes on site in the field and and started up, commissioned and start operating. And that's a number also that is, is, is interested to our clients who are, op who are operating facilities. To what is my total carbon number for my operating mine or, or a fertilizer plant or a cement plant or something like that. So we need to really come up with with answers on all those questions is to and, and spread it out. And, and, ob and obviously, we need to also look at our sub suppliers that we buy equipment from to complete our package. Eric, I want to throw to you, uh, if people want to stay in touch uh, and find out, uh, you know, what your members are doing, what SIMSA is doing, uh, where would you direct them to? 
The best place to go to learn about SIMSA would be the SIMSA website. We we do a lot of we do a lot of events, um, several a month, in fact, um, and and any major news items are on our website as well. Uh, and things we're doing in the calculators there, our member databases there, everything's at simsa.ca. Well, what a treat. Uh, this has been lucky number 13 uh, episode uh, for us because uh, 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 some wonderful insights, I guess, into the potash industry and what's happening uh, with Simsa uh, and in the, the province of Saskatchewan. So, Erica, I do want to thank you for uh, lending, uh, lending us a bit of your time uh, to, you know, give us some, some perspectives uh, from, from where you're sitting. Well, thank you for having me. It's, it's great to talk about our association and our members and what we're up to here in Saskatchewan. I'm always happy to share that story, so thank you.